There's nothing as beautiful as a long drive down the rugged coast of Norway, with an unending sight of majestic fjords, rivers and lakes on one side and lofty mountains and waterfalls on the other. With seven ferries along the way, the almost 700-mile trip between the cities of Kristiansand in the south and Trondheim in the north typically runs about 21 hours, at an average speed of about 30 miles an hour. And each ferry ride costs about $16, which makes even a one-side trip quite expensive. The rugged west coast of Norway, home to thousands, is a challenge to travel along by car. The harsh weather conditions make it an unpredictable route, with roads often closing and ferries often cancelling their departure due to snow, heavy winds or high waves. Even if the weather is clear, each ferry ride can take about 45 minutes time and costs about $16 per ride. Steep, icy mountains and deep fjords make Western Norway route famously scenic and will entertain most of the tourists. But it also makes life difficult for the people commuting for business or medical emergencies. Fortunately, the government of Norway has come up with a multi-billion dollar megaproject, Coastal Highway E39, that will hopefully cut the driving time in almost half and make the journey ferry free. The $48 billion master plan aims to replace ferries with bridges and to create tunnels. Rogfast is one of the first crossings in the series which will link E39. The structure will reach depth of up to 390 meters below sea level and 27 kilometers long, making it the world's first, deepest and the longest rock tunnel. But the most ambitious aspect is the development of submerged floating tunnels that sit around 30 meters under the surface of the water. Some of the fjords along the route are too wide or very deep for conventional infrastructure, which makes the mega project a complicated test for engineers and architects. The floating tunnel, however, will be built within a fjord over 1400 meters deep. The plan is to build it deep enough under the surface so as to allow the biggest ships to safely pass over but also ensure that there is enough room underneath to accommodate submarine passage. The depth of the tunnel will also keep it away from the influence of winds, waves and currents, making it compatible for smooth driving underwater. Currently 50 international experts are doing detailed simulations and detailed measurements of wind speed, current, undersea landslides, bedrock geology, etc. to make sure the plans, as well as the tunnel, is rooted in the real-world environment, says Ariana Minoretti, chief engineer at Norway's Public Roads Administration. The two concrete tubes of the tunnel, one for traffic headed in each direction completely submerged into water and will be firmly fixed in position and attached to floating pontoons, spaced 820 feet apart to allow sea vessels to pass through. This new way of transportation will be extremely beneficial for Norway even from an economic point of view. The journey between Kristiansand and Trondheim is part of the E39, which is a key route for Norway, explains Kirsti Kvalheim Dunham, a project manager at NPRA. A combination of motorways, roads and ferry rides, E39 runs along the southwestern Norwegian coast. More than 50% of export goods in Norway originate from this area. Yet the route has a very low standard for a European road. Crossing the fjords via ferry, a popular transport method, can be time consuming. The ambitious underwater tunnel project will make the passage easier, faster, and cost efficient. These new roads will also shorten the paths to hospitals, schools, and markets, which will leave Norway with a sustainable, more diverse economy. Norway also hopes that the mega project will also help in population growth as some areas like Tysnes in the rural area of the western coast have lost over 50% of its population in the last century due to inaccessibility. The Coastal Highway Route E39 project is the largest infrastructure project in modern Norwegian history, and possibly the largest ongoing road project worldwide. The NPRA are considering a new type of structure, a submerged floating tube bridge for some of the deepest and longest fjords exposed to harsh weather conditions where suspension bridges or floating bridges will be difficult to build. When a fjord is deeper than 100 meters or wider than 2 to 3 kilometers, existing engineering solutions aren't applicable. The seabed would be too deep for a traditional rock tunnel because it would imply the use of a huge amount of land on the shores. Floating bridges and other types of bridges on tension leg platforms, 
even if they are suitable for deep crossings, are susceptible to harsh weather conditions such as strong waves and currents. This is why the submerged floating tube bridge has become an attractive solution for some of the longest and deepest fjords, its submergence can naturally reduce the main sea load. The submerged floating tube bridge is certainly an engineering marvel, but the idea isn't new. In 1886, British naval architect Sir James Edward Reed also proposed the concept of such a floating tube bridge. In Norway the idea was studied since 1923 but the technology was not that advanced at that time. But the conceptual engineering marvel is close to becoming a reality, thanks to the dedication and research of hundreds of engineers. The Lerdal Tunnel is an important part of the extension of a ferry-free, reliable road link between the two largest cities in Norway. The decision to build a tunnel rather than refurbish existing roads was taken to avoid difficult terrain with high risks of rock falls. From an environmental perspective, the tunnel was seen as a justifiable investment to avoid destroying sections of the unspoiled natural landscape. The Coastal Highway Route project has collaborated with three of the largest universities in the Nordic region, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, the University of Stavanger and Chalmers University of Technology, and has about 50 PhD candidates working on solving different engineering challenges related to the E39 project. Not just that, the floating tunnel will also have several safety features, such as escape routes commuters can take in case of emergencies. The Rogfast project will consist of two tunnels connected with emergency exits every 250 meters along with telephones and surveillance cameras available at various intervals. The work for this particular project began in 2018 and was expected to be completed in 2026 with a budget of $2 billion, but with the project already overrunning the expense expectations, it is now expected to be completed in 2029. Some of the biggest risks in the project are explosions, fire and overloading, as escaping an underwater tunnel in case of a fire emergency would definitely not be an easy task. Thankfully NPRA is working with the Norwegian University of Science and Technology Center for Advanced Structural Analysis, using small live explosives to investigate how tubular concrete structures behave when subjected to internal blast loads. These next-level underwater villas are making waves the tests will help the team to understand what would happen to the tunnel's structure if for example, a truck carrying dangerous goods exploded inside. Results so far indicate that the constant water pressure that surrounds the floating tunnels reduces the damage caused by explosions. Working with the Norwegian Navy, the NPRA team is also investigating how they will tackle a situation if submarines crashed into the tunnels. By far the most challenging fjord of all of the coastal highway crossings is that at Sognefjord, also known as the King of the Fjords. Sognefjord, Norway's largest and deepest fjord is over 3.7 km wide and 1.3 km deep at its lowest point. While the extreme size of the fjords pose their own challenges, engineers must also account for the high number of ships that enter the fjord on a regular basis. To deliver this, the project team are considering numerous different types of crossing for this fjord. The Norwegian government is confident that the improved E39 will open up more of the west coast to tourism. Norway makes $5.6 billion from tourism every year, and expects the numbers to be improved with the new accessible pathway. While the tunnels may become attractions in their own right especially if they are a world's first, just like an Eiffel Tower but underwater. The E39 highway will also create new links between islands and the mainland. It is expected that the 1,100 km long floating highway will be running by 2050. A continuous E39 highway that will be accessible 24-7, with fixed links between islands and the mainland will make the western coast ODF Norway more accessible for not only the people who are living at the coast, but also for tourists and for the transportation of goods. This engineering marvel is one of a kind. Norway may be the first one to start working on such an ambitious project but it will definitely not be the last one as China and Italy are also working on the same kind of model. It will be interesting to know who will finish it first. What are your thoughts about the underwater highway? Which country do you think will finish first? Tell us in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already.